Hey, we're at the Kickport booth. Jesse's uh, going to tell us about some of the new stuff that you uh, guys are introducing at the show. All right. Well, thank you, Andy. And, and it's a pleasure to have you here. Drum Magazine is amazing. So uh, thank you. So uh, NAM 2014 at the Kickport booth. Um, new things, what do we have? Um, our most important and exciting thing that we have are the uh, new FX ports. And these are ports for the snare drum, the rack tom, the floor tom, and the bass drum batter. They come in one and two inches, and they're configured a little bit differently. There's, there's four separate ports. It, uh, uh, there's two one-inch ports and two two-inch ports, but they're specific for a rack tom, floor tom, bass drum, or the snare. Um, so that's really about it. We, we've also been excited. We're looking at the application of our uh, of these sports. They're called the FX Series sports in marching drums. And uh, so far, we had the University of Oklahoma use our uh, two-inch bass drum ports on their marching drums in the Sugar Bowl three weeks ago in front of 80,000 people, and uh, uh, which is very exciting. And the music director there just loves the ports. And uh, so we're, we're going to see how that goes, but so far we're pretty excited about that. What was their feedback on that? How did they feel it, it affected the sound? Well, the, 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 what they're looking for, especially in the outdoor places, uh, places is uh, uh, more volume and more articulation. And basically, it gives more volume and more articulation. In the snare over here, the difference is, you know, these are cranked down so hard usually, they sound like countertops. So it sounds like popcorn on a countertop. If, if, I mean, that's as close as I can describe the sound. When you open it up, and you've got this beautiful drum that's 14 inches, I mean, 14 inches deep. Um, uh, when you put the port in, all of a sudden you're hearing the shell and you're hearing the snare more. So instead of a, a, a popcorn sound, it really sounds like you're putting the drumsticks on a countertop. It sounds more like, a, I don't know, maybe a gunshot, if you will. And again, there's more volume, more articulation, more of the, the drum shell sound, and you can really hear it 100 feet away. So it's pretty exciting. Um, um, and uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see where it goes, but that's what we're working on. I mean, it seems to me under those circumstances when you're playing in the stadium and the audience is, you know, half a football field away, any little bit of, uh, uh, of a boost that you can give to your uh, volume and tonal range uh, can pay dividends. Well, that's it. And when I've talked to uh, some of our people that we work with who have been with Vanguards and Blue Devils, there's a, kind of a new trend in that there are, electro there are keyboards, electronic keyboards, there's more horns, there's all these different instruments. And where the, where the drum line uh, used to drown out all the instruments, yes. now they can't even be heard. Right. So, And they're like, well, what do we do? So when I've shown it to these people, their initial reaction is, oh my gosh, this is, this is fantastic. I mean, they're really, really excited. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can, this application becomes something that people, uh, you know, receive and embrace, and, and we'll see. So should we do a little demo so we can hear what's going on here? Yeah, I'm going to turn you over to Tommy Ricard, who is uh, an amazing drummer and done a lot of touring and playing, uh, uh, touring and, and uh, recording in studios. Um, and he's going to walk you through kind of a demonstration of the FX Sports on the drum set. So this one is the uh, kit with the parts. Completely ported kit. We have it on the uh, on the snare. We have it on the batter side of the snare, uh, res side of the 12-inch tom. On the smaller toms, I like to put it on the resonant side. It's a smaller note. I don't want to extend that note as long as I can because the, the board does mute it a little bit or just get rid of some of those overtones you don't want. Um, on the 14, we have it on the batter side, and on the 16, we have it on the batter side. Uh, you could put it on the resonant side as well. If you want the note to be a little bit longer, I actually do do that because I'm a little more old school in the sound that I like. So you're going to hear a little more attack out of the 14 to 16 for sure. So here's the here's kick. Oh, we also have it on the batter side, of, batter side of the kick drum as well. So you have a part on both sides. Yeah. So when I was in the studio last week, I mic'd the batter side and I mic'd the resonant side instead of putting the mic inside the kick drum. And I was able to back the microphone off the resonant side to get a little more full sound and have a little air around it. Beautiful sound. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Snare. Oh, we don't have the snare turned on. <laughs> so you're going to hear it dried up the snare a little bit. 
give him a fat backbeat kind of a thing. So what I've been doing live is I've been giving myself an option to have either with a port or without. So I have a snare over here with, with a port, snare here without a port, or vice versa. And the record I did last week, I had a, half the record was done with a port on the snare, half without. The slower stuff that they wanted kind of more dry, fat sound was with a port and they loved it. Hardly any EQ on the snare, it was great. Tom's the same thing, so. You hear a little more projection, a little less of the boom, boom. And the 14, same. 16. Yeah. Yep. Here's, here's, here's the 14. 16. It does really kind of dry it out a little bit, doesn't it? It does dry it out a little bit, yeah. And as you still get a long enough note where you still get some fatness out of it. And that's why this is a little shorter of a note than I would like myself. Again, I like a little bit longer old school sound, so I put it on the resonant side. If you're doing a little bit more fast gospel -y drumming or metal drumming, the attack, you'll probably like it on the batter side because you'll hear the notes a little clearer. I am uh, i don't play that fast. I'm not able to, first of all. <laughs> so I like a little slower, longer notes to kind of fill in the space. Yeah. It seems to me that if you're in the studio and you know you're going to go for more of a controlled sound, yep. this beats putting duct tape on your drum. Duct tape, duct tape and moon gel. I mean, not necessarily moon gels work great. Um, I just like the I like to let the head to just kind of breathe a little bit more. And I want to hear the shell. You have these beautiful maple shells, these birch shells, or whatever shells you have. Even this, on the snare drums, you've got these brass or aluminum. They're really amazing shells, and you, you're not necessarily, you can't necessarily hear them sometimes. So putting the port, you can hear everything inside the drum. You hear the, you hear the crispness of the, uh, the snares against the bottom head a little bit better. It's awesome. I mean, you hear the side stick. Yeah. It sounds like a wood box. It's beautiful. Yeah. You turn it off even, too. You can more. It's very woody, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a really great sound. Um, and I do like hearing the shells a little bit better, a little more out of the out of the ports. Kind of opens them up a little bit. Well, thank you so much for uh, giving us a demo today. Thanks for coming over and visiting us.